Jesus Christ, I look like the shop teacher. Yeah, and well, some of y'all didn't go to shop and it shows, I'm just saying. No, so today we're going to talk about the next episode, I don't know, of the Sturgis series for 2022. To back up, in 2021, I guess it was, I did a series of videos on Sturgis because I've, because I've been going since I was little. And a, I did like where to stay, what does it cost? Actually, I didn't do what does it cost. I did that first time this year, and that turned out to be pretty useful. But where to grab a drink, and then I always end the series with what not to do closer to departure day because you can really screw up your Sturgis rally pretty easily by being stupid. Um, anyway, so today the topic is going to be where to stay. So let's do that. I'm professional. I have notes. Three pages. Anyway, this might be a long video. I apologize in advance. So, um, first off, before I think you can do a whole like, where should I stay at Sturgis video, it should be, you, should, you need to sort of chat a minute about what, air quote, Sturgis is. Uh, yes, Sturgis is a small town in South Dakota that only has, I don't know, what is it, five, six thousand, four hundred, I don't know how many freaking people, but it's a very small town in South Dakota. And the rally is called Sturgis, but Sturgis as a concept, I don't know, is much bigger than that little ass town. Like it's a it's a huge area. No disrespect to Sturgis people, but you know. Um, it's a huge area. So you may be, let me look at my notes here I wrote here. Um, you might be riding as far east once you get there to like Wall to go to the Badlands Loop. You might be, you're going to go west to Devil's Tower probably, which is in Wyoming. You're probably going to go north of there up to Alzada, Montana to go to Topless Tuesday if you do that kind of thing. Uh, if you're a nice Christian person who doesn't go to Topless Tuesday, we probably don't have much in common. But anyway, um, you'll spend the majority of your time, in my opinion, southwest, right? Yeah, of, of this, the town of Sturgis in the Black Hills National Forest, uh, Custer, Custer State Park. That's where Needles Highway and all that stuff. That's where the good riding is. Uh, so you're probably going to spend most of your time there, keep in mind. Uh, but you're going to go all of the damn place. I'll probably throw up a picture real quick there, like, you know, bing, um, that uh, uh, shows how big this area is. Because the square I'm showing right now is probably you're going to be in most of this area. That's a big-ass spot, the dot in the middle being the town of Sturgis. So we'll go ahead and take that down now. Um, I sort of cut this up into the kinds of dudes and dudettes that go to the Sturgis rally. Uh, and, and, and the sort of different categories of people because there are different types. That stops. The light is off. Let me fix right. that. Light is an issue today. I know I live in sunny Florida, but tisn't today. Ugly. Anyway, for Florida. I apologize. I know some of you are going through some terrible weather right now, but for Florida, this sucks. Anyway, so the first group, um, I really like this group. I like all groups, but I really like this group. And that is the, I just like to ride screw people. I don't want to see anybody get out of my face. That, that kind of dude. Uh, and do that. Uh, that kind of person, I, a little, some recommendations there. If that's your kind of thing, you just want to get up in the morning, you want to lay down miles. You just want to run needles back and forth and iron mountain road six times. And then you're going to go to Wyoming and you're going to, you know, Gillette, Wyoming to go get a t-shirt from Sundance or, you know, that's two different towns. Anyway, uh, you're just going to do that all day long. If you don't want to see a person, you don't want to be a part of the revelry that is the rally, you just want to ride. Um, if that's the case, I would say stay closer to the good rides, number one, uh, and stay out of Sturgis. Stay away from Sturgis. Why? It's going to blow your price up, blow your cost. If you stay in or closer to Sturgis, the price tag goes up a lot. Um, there's tons of people, tons of traffic, and hotels are really expensive in the town of Sturgis. Uh, you might run into town one day. You know, you might just want to see the vendors and grab, you know, a t-shirt, even though, you know, top tip, there's t-shirts everywhere. You find them at vendors at gas stations selling damn things. And they're not all crappy either. Um, you don't want to stay in the rides like, like Keystone or Hill City. Uh, any place in Rapid City, maybe in Spearfish, the town of Spearfish or someplace in Spearfish Canyon along the way. Uh, or maybe as far away, as I said, as like Sundance in Wyoming. You know, you're going to, you're going to have a what is it, probably 60 miles, I guess, east to get back into the Sturgis area every day. But if you're there to lay down miles, who cares, right? But don't stay in Sturgis. Stay near the rides, uh, and you're going to have a better time. You're going to have less traffic and crap to deal with. Uh, the next, oh, one thing I would do, though, before you book, if you've never been, do map that crap. Like, if, you, if you're if you going to book a room at, I don't know, Bob's Hotel in Sundance, Wyoming, just go into, like, you know, the Google Maps 
wizardry and and see like how far is it from there to wall south dakota just to give yourself an idea the day you go to the badlands are you going to have 200 miles in before you even get there I, I just pulled that number out of my ear but you know what i mean just sort of get an idea of what your appetite is and how far you're going to be before you actually click the whole book button um and then the second group uh not as common but they're out there and that is that their favorite thing is to look at vendors and see the latest stuff for bikes uh, so if, the, if your thing is the latest pipes, um, stereo equipment, riding gear, seats, performance upgrades, you know, all that sort of stuff, uh, your two favorite places of the rally are going to be Lazelle Street, which is where it's like a city of vendors, and the rally at Exit 55. Um, the rally at Exit 55 is sort of a marketing name for Black Hills Harley's vendor city. So Black Hills Harley at Exit 55 there in the Rapid City area has a parking lot as big as my subdivision. And it's nothing but, you know, Mustang seats and, you know, uh, uh, S&S and all these different, you know, manufacturers, you know, put theirs up. I, I, uh, brands like Tab Performance are always there. I'm trying to think if they're, ha! Kind of funny, I just realized there's a sign. <laughs> the, uh, uh, they might be downtown, they might be in Lazelle. So you have, you're going to have to check both. You know what I mean? I don't think, most vendors aren't setting up tents at both locations just because it's freaking expensive. So you're probably gonna have to do Lazelle and Rally at X55 if you want to see everything, right? Um, where to stay? I'd probably say Rapid City for that, just because you're right there, there at Rally X55, and you're gonna find you're gonna find lower prices in Rapid City than in Sturgis and more options. So I'd probably stay in Rapid City if you're if you're a vendor hound and you're there to see the latest stuff. Um, the last group is I want to fall down drunk every night and potentially ride my bike or golf cart off into a drainage ditch. That could be your thing, and I'm not judging. Uh, no BS, we were at the chip two, three years ago, standing there by Bikini Beach late at night, having a good time, and looked down to the right, and there's in that drainage ditch was an upside down John Deere Gator 6x6, six six, just at the bottom of there. And, and I just looked at the dude next to us that we had just met, our new best friend for the night, and said, anyone sure there's not like a body under that right now? And he was like, oh no, he's fine, he's over there having a drink. So he just left it, <laughs> climbed out, went and had a drink. I love that dude. Anyway, um, if you want to find trouble, if you want to defile yourself on a daily basis, fine. I'm partially in that group myself. Uh, I think campgrounds are probably the best places for wild nights. Uh, not probably. They are the best place for wild nights because, yes, you can have a good time on Main Street, but the popo rolls in there at, was it, one or two and clears out. And if you've had one too many libations, you're going to end up in a clink. So probably stay where you're gonna be, you know what I mean, at the end of the night. Um, so late night, so there's not a damn thing wrong with being, you know, crazy party animal, that's that's great, I love those people too. Uh, if you want the wildest experiences, you're probably gonna want either Glencoe or the Chip, and for different reasons. So, um, the Buffalo Chip has the big concerts, you know, the mega names play the Buffalo Chip every year at the Sturgis Rally. Uh, if you're there already, and, and also they don't close down, so after the concert ends at say midnight, People are, are, are having raucous fun uh, for hours, you know, afterward. Uh, so, you know, a good idea to stay there. The, the, there's more security at the chip, so if your type is more the whole, like, let's get out of control and maybe get to blows and, and that sounded wrong, come to blows and maybe you like the clothing optional scene, that's Glencoe. Um, Glencoe's fantastic, uh, good place. I've stayed there, you know, several times over the years. Uh, and, and no matter what, no matter where I stay, I always get passes for both. So if I'm at the chip sleeping there, I still have a pass for Glencoe because the night where maybe I'm not into the concert, you know, they have all different kinds of concerts at the chip. They're, they're going to have uh, Travis Tritt. They're going to have uh, um, Snoop Dogg. They're going to have, you know, a whole bunch. Oh, uh, uh, who was it? Uh, Rob Zombie was just announced. So certain nights I'll be there for all of those. But, you know, they'll start doing the sort of, late 70s radio rock famous bands too that are just not my thing if they're yours fine but you know night ranger i'm just pulling that out of my ear not gonna go see night ranger fine if you're a big fan but you know if if they're even announced they're playing that night i'm gonna get on the bus and go to glenco and have a good time that's that's my plan get on the bus i ain't gonna ride why because jail food disagrees with me um so how do you stay at glencore the buffalo chip well, at those two places, you have tenting, obviously. So if you buy your, your wristband for Tree Fitty, or whatever the number is, um, 
you can tent for that. That that includes your camping. Uh, if you want a camp a cabin, 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 a cabin, that's like twenty five hundred. Now the cabins don't have showers. Keep in mind, it's basically a large tool shed with an air conditioner in it. No offense to those places, but that's really what they are. Uh, twenty five hundred to sleep in a tool shed with an air conditioner, and a sink and a microwave and a and a and a, and a little fridge, of course. Uh, what I like for the same price, or used to be the same price, might change this year, I don't know, 2500 to rent an RV. So when you get there, there is an RV sitting there already hooked up that's yours for the week that you've rented. And those can sleep up to six people, so you can slice and dice that price up a little bit there. But a rental RV to me is a damn good way to go, you know. Uh, also, you've got your own RV spot. If you're an RVer like me and the missus are, uh, your space can run you between $500 and $1,000, depending on the size of the space and the location and all that stuff. One thing I will draw a line between Glencoe and the Buffalo Chip, and we'll get to other campgrounds later, don't worry. Uh, and it's a thing that really drives me nuts. The Buffalo Chip does not have sewer hookups. Glencoe does. So when you get an RV spot at the Chip, you're getting 30 or 50 amp power, and you're getting water spigot. Uh, and then you got to do the poop truck. Probably not what they want to be called to do to do that for a living, but when you pay X amount of dollars, 25 bucks, whatever it is, for a truck to come through and, and hook up and, and pump out your tanks. Uh, not a job I'd want to do, but much respect to the dudes who do it. But anyway, the reason why I don't like the damn, the damn pump truck is I have three valves on my rig, two grays and a black, and without fail, I get back and they've done something wrong. They haven't pulled the black. They haven't. So it's just a pain in my ass, and I like to be there when they do it to make sure it's done right because I'm anal retentive about maintaining my stuff and... It's a whole thing. At Glencoe, you've got sewer hookups. So if you're like me and like that and, and not into concerts, Glencoe's probably the place for you. Um, anyway, so I want an RV, but I don't want to be bothered with loud idiots like Professional Monkey. Mrs. Monkey typed this. She's a jerk sometimes. Um, there are a lot of options for this. I'm just going to move on like I wasn't just insulted. Uh, first off, you can park your rig in quieter spots at the loud places further out. So you can still stay at Glencoe and the Chip and get some sleep. Uh, just stay further out. You know, you can do that. There's RV spots that are, you know, far out from the, from the stage. Uh, there are quieter spots. Um, also, I think Glencoe might be quieter than the Chip overall. Probably because everyone just passes out at a certain point. Uh, I do say bring earplugs no matter where you stay. It just couldn't hurt. Some foam earplugs, roll them suckers up plug your ear holes and you'll sleep a little better. But there is a list of good good RV you know, campgrounds. I have not stayed at these, but they, they all have great reviews. If you run a crappy campground at Sturgis, you're not going to last long. So you can pretty well trust that any place you stay isn't going to suck. But here's a list of the ones that I personally know of that are that are pretty good. Uh, Lamphere is nice. Uh, the Pappy Hoyle campground at the Full Throttle is surprisingly tame because it is the same property as the Full Throttle Saloon, but I hear it's nice and kind of calm. Uh, the Iron Horse, the Steel Pony, which these all sound like strip clubs. Anyway, uh, the Ride and Rest also still sounds like a strip club for old people. Um, Sturgis RV Park, uh, and I hear, I'm going to call this one out separately because I'm hearing more and more really good stuff about this one campground that I've never stayed at, never even been to, but I've got friends that go there and say the place is awesome. Uh, kickstands. So Kickstands is a campground that has a stage and has live music and it has, you know, food and all that other stuff, uh, but the location's really good. It's right at the exit off of I-90 at Pleasant Pleasant Valley Road, Pleasant Valley. It's the exit you get off to go the back way to the Buffalo Chip. It's like right there. So you can go out and go the back way to the Buffalo Chip and back pretty easily. Uh, and, and I just hear that the people are nice and that it's well run. So haven't stayed there, but check out kickstands if you want. Um, now, this last one is us, me and Mrs. Monkey. And that is the I like it all. You know, and, and that really is who we are. We, we, we love the rides. We get up in the morning, uh, we have breakfast either in our rig or we go down to, we stay at the Chip a lot. So go to Stage West Cafe, grab breakfast, which is really good. We're typically rolling on our rides by like 10. That's the goal. And then we're on the bike out doing, again, whether we're uh, Topless Tuesday day or we're just running needles back and forth or we're out in the Badlands or we're, you know, going to Deadwood or Vanneker Canyon or Spearfish Canyon or, you know, we're doing all those rides. We'll do all those rides multiple times. We're typically on the bike from about 10 a.m. till about 5 or 6 in the evening. 
that's when we get back to camp. When we get back to camp, it's sort of a rinse and repeat thing for the debauchery of the night. So, um, we like that. We like to ride all day. We also love concerts. We love live music, and we love seeing the big names with, you know, 50,000 of our closest friends. Maybe the number's even bigger. So, that's our thing also. So, we're typically at the chip for a couple major concerts. We also love Main Street. We like to go see vendors. We like to do all the stuff you do at Sturgis, and, and we like it all pretty much equally. So we'll typically stay at Glencore the Chip and then do you know, all the other wonderful stuff that goes along with it. Um, I've lost my place. Uh, again, it says, <laughs> she wrote in caps, rant on sewer hookups. I've already done that. Um, so the concerts at the Chip are gonna run from classic rock to rap to country to all that stuff. You're gonna see all that stuff. And, and a bunch of them still haven't been announced, but there's already some big names. But that's where we're probably gonna stay this year unless something changes. Uh, a little plug here for DeBus. That's a company uh, based there in Sturgis and it's actually called Da, D-A, Bus. Uh, and there's a couple other competitors too, but I just, somehow I always end up on the Bus. It's five bucks per ride. Uh, and when you get on the bus, they're little, they're little reclaimed short buses and church buses that they've painted up with flames on them and all kinds of crazy stuff. There's typically a very nice young lady with a degreeing level of clothing that will sell you a really cold beer for like a dollar or two, too, on there. So that's nice. Um, do you know that there's poles in buses? Anyway, so the, the, the bus is a great thing. You can buy a wristband that's good, as many rides as you want. You can go to the website. I'll link that down below. Uh, I think it's like 100 and a quarter. Maybe I'm wrong. But it, it's something like that to have an unlimited amount of, ri amount of rides. We end up riding late some nights also. So I typically don't do the wristband. I do the $5 per ride thing. But the bus is a great way to go from the Buffalo Chip to Glencoe. And, and, or, you know, Glencoe to Buffalo Chip, back, you know, that kind of thing. Also, they go into, into downtown, so they'll drop you off right at the Iron Horse on, on Main Street. And then you can go to the Knuckle, you know, for dinner and all that stuff. Typically, we get on the bike in the morning, like I say, we ride all day, we come back, and then the bike sits, once we get back to the rig, on those days. Why? Because it is real easy to go to jail in Sturgis. There are cops everywhere pulling people for DWIs. Um, little little bit of advice. They don't necessarily have to see you weaving or doing anything there. They pull bikes just because they feel like it <laughs> and then say you were weaving. I'm just saying it's just a known fact about Sturgis that you can be riding straight as an arrow doing the speed limit not a damn thing wrong and whoop whoop like you'll, you'll get pulled over and checked just to see if you're it It, it freaking happens trust me. So if you're a drinker, park that damn bike and use the bus to get around. Stay out of jail. Stay alive. That, that's just, this is coming from someone who's done this for years. Um, hotels as a category. They're everywhere. Plan to spend two to three hundred percent, maybe even more, what the normal rates are for that week. So if you want to stay in a hotel and you're not crazy about the crowds, go the week before the rally. Go the week after. The prices are going to go down a lot. Go two weeks before. It'll be even cheaper. Um, it seems like, and this may sound crazy for, you know, what is a sort of a small town area, but 250 to $300 a night is fairly typical during the rally. There are exceptions. Someone right now is commenting, I found a Ritz Carlton for $75. And it's like, no, no, that's the Rick Carlton. It's not the same. But anyway, <laughs> if, if, if you're the type like my dad, the old man always says, I'm just going to sleep there. I don't care. I'm like, yeah, but you're going to catch dysentery. Anyway, just... You know, there are cheap hotels out there, just be aware. Um, the closer you are to the Sturgis, the city, the higher it's going to be. So, you know, maybe consider staying further out to save a buck. If this is your first time you've ever been to the rally and you're a hotel, that's the way you're going to go. Um, you probably want to stay in Rapid City just because it's a large city. It has everything you could ever want restaurant-wise and all that sort of stuff. You are still going to be kind of far from the action if you're someone who wants to go to a concert late at night, but you know maybe that's a good starting point. Next category I can't really talk much about, and that's Airbnb. Never done it. I travel internationally for my job all over the freaking globe, and I have never stayed in an Airbnb. Why? Because if something goes wrong, I kind of want a manager to bitch at, and you can't do that if it's like Bill who owns the house. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, and I've have have heard some work colleagues that have done the Airbnb thing and I've heard some horror stories. So to me, I'm still a hotel kind of guy. 
Um, the Uber of houses. I'm not, not too much into that because some Uber drivers are idiots sometimes. Um, I already talked about tenting. Uh, one thing under tenting though, something I've seen these people, haven't used them yet, but I've seen these people at Sturgis at the Buffalo Chip. I saw them at Biketoberfest at Cackleberry Campground. I saw them at Windy Acres at Leesburg, same company, and solid dudes, and people seem to be having a good time, and that is Camp Easy Ride. Uh, you can find them on Facebook. You can actually, it's it's Camp Space E-Z Ride. I'll try and put a link to it, but just in case. Uh, Camp Easy Ride is this idea where they set everything up for you and you just show up. So if you're a rider and you're riding, you know, 1,000, 2,000 miles to Sturgis, the idea of not having to pack all that crap is pretty cool. So this is what it comes with. No affiliation with people. I just think it's a neat idea. So if you, you, you pay your campground access for you, that's besides this cost. So your, your tree fitty, wristband for the chip, whatever, that you, you're still going to need that. But for $399... In addition to the cost of your admission to the campground, they provide uh, a high ceiling 10 by 14 tent with a rain fly and a built-in LED light, so it's you know lit in there. A high-rise pillow top queen mattress for you queens out there. Complete linens, comforter, and pillow and two pillows. Uh, a power outlet, which is cool if you're a fat guy like me with a CPAP machine. Uh, two outlets, it says. Um, a high velocity bedside van, fan, which is very specific. It has a damn fan in the tent. Uh, an indoor area rug, if you're bougie and like to feel like, anyway. Um, a folding side table, a small vanity mirror, why the hell would I want to look at myself? Uh, an outdoor area rug, you know, where you put your boots on and stuff. Two folding camp chairs, an enclosed hot shower station. There's an asterisk because it depends on where you are. I'm just saying it was in the list. All day coffee and water station. Continental breakfast in the morning, uh, ice cold bottled water as you dismount your bike. That's pretty cool. If you pull in and some dude runs up like, sir, anyway. Um, a covered easy lounge. What, I, what I've seen is they have like inflatable furniture and tents and they set up games and it's a place for people to hang out. That, that seemed pretty cool. They seemed like they were having a good time. They even had a, an inflatable hot tub at, at Leesburg. Um, throw bleach in that some bitch every once in a while. Uh, community hammocks for relaxing in the sun with your clothes off. I added that. They didn't say that. Uh, various camp games, giant Jenga, cornhole, which again, cornhole means something else entirely in some places. And then a bedside personal care package, which sounds dirty, but all it is is a bottle of water, a sleep mask, earplugs, and some ibuprofen. Um, and then a, a, they have like grills out there for you. If you want to stop and grab a steak, they have stuff you can stop and grill. That's pretty cool. And a complimentary breakfast cocktail. So, like, you get up in the morning, walk out your tent, and there's a Bloody Mary waiting. I don't know if it's Bloody Mary, but that's pretty cool. Anywho, so last thing I want to talk about before we shut this whole thing down, and this is an important point for me, because I, I, you heard me say this a million times, I don't even want anyone dying or getting hurt. Stay where you're going to end your day. So, I touched on this earlier, but in all seriousness, lots of people have lost their lives at Sturgis. And most of the time is because they got drunk and got on that damn motorcycle and decided I'll just ride home, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll tell you a little story. I, I, I was stone sober this night, but not stoned. I was stone sober, was straight as an arrow. Um, we were staying in 2015 up by Mount Rushmore in Keystone. Beautiful place to stay if you're a rider. Uh, the old man was with me and he picked the hotel and, and it was it, it being a great place. But I went to see Godsmack. Some of you are already laughing because you'll remember in 2015, the Godsmack concert was rained out by what we damn near thought was tornadoes coming in. Uh, and, it, and it rained real hard and it wasn't necessarily forecast. Um, blowing sideways, tents blowing away, that kind of stuff. Bad rain. They, they ended up having it end early. Godsmack had to walk off and not, not finish the concert. It was raining that bad. Um, so when the rain started to slow down, I went out to my bike. Some bitch had damn near sunk in the mud. Uh, got it out. Didn't even get out of the chip until probably 2 in the morning because of all the mud and the chaos and, and a dude had fallen and broken his leg. So me and two other guys are helping that guy and it's been a whole deal. So then I get out of the chip and I'm heading back to Keystone and I realize this sucks. Because it's, uh, what was it, is it 50, 60 miles back? Which no, that's not far. But it's far when it's cold and raining. Um, it was raining the whole way, cold as hell, and I had, you know, uh, and I had, a, I had a 2014 Street Glide with the old halogen headlight, single headlight, and I'm riding up 16 toward Rushmore in the p 
pitch black. There's no street lights. There's no nothing. And I'm thinking, this is dangerous, man. I'm going to fucking die. Like, <laughs> you know, in the rain, freezing my ass off, riding to Rushmore at 2 in the morning. Um, stay where you're going to end your night and avoid that whole situation. If you're going to party hard, stay in the campground you're going to end your night at. If you're a Sturgis hound and you love Main Street, try and stay close to that and use the bus. Uh, uh, there are no Ubers up there, by the way. There's no Uber, so you're going to have to find your way home. Um, anyway, just keep that in mind. A little commercial to don't freaking die, please, or end up crippled as a result of being stupid. Stay where you're going to end your day. Um, that's it. This is a community. We talk. So comment, and I'll answer the comments. I read every single comment. If you want to send me an email with a question you don't feel comfortable asking in public, um, that scares me. Anyway, but I'll put it here on the screen, but my email is demonk at professional-monkey.com. D-A-M-O-N-K at professional-monkey.com, but I'll put it up on the screen too. Send me an email. I answer every email. So that's it. Let me know other topics that you think I'm going to miss. I am going to still do a video on like where my favorite place to eat, favorite place to grab a drink, my rides, and then I'll do, like I did last year, links to Harley-Davidson app ride routes you can use, stuff like that. Uh, I already did a video on budgeting, but email me if you want that 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 budget Excel sheet that I made to sort of give an idea of how painful this can be. Uh, <laughs> but I'll send that to you as well. And uh, that's it. So take care of each other out there. We'll talk real soon. Bye.